All right, ladies, so today we're going to do the next section of Chapter 4, Section 2, um, and Lecture 2. So Section 2 is called The Local Church, A First-Hand View of Unity and Diversity. So um, the main idea of this chapter is in union with the Pope, bishops help to bring about the unity of the local church amidst the great amount of diversity of languor, culture, and custom. So the two main things that we're talking about this section is diversity and kind of what it means and um, the bishop's role in diversity as well as our role in diversity. And so hopefully, um, hopefully yesterday you guys did your worksheets and I kind of want to go over a couple of these questions because it ties into what we're talking about today. Um, just in case you weren't there yesterday, there was a priest who had, was a big soccer fan, celebrated Mass, um, and attributed a lot of the Mass and drew a lot of attention to this soccer match. And so um, some people had a big conflict with it. Soccer fans thought it was the coolest thing in the world, I'm sure. Um, but, and we're not going to go over the questions I want to go over are these ones. Um, I guess certain people's reaction to it, I'm guessing your guys' were all different, but some people probably, and I could be wrong, just assuming, some people probably thought it was super cool. Some people probably thought it was really nice that he embraced culture the way he did. He took something that certain people are passionate about and brought it into the mass. Um, some people probably thought it was kind of cool, but maybe some parts of it were a little bit much, like the soccer ball thing, kicking the ball down the um, down the aisle. Not called an aisle, but down like the center. Yeah, I guess it's down the aisle. Like some probably thought maybe that was a little much, but the rest of it was probably fine. Other people may have thought, "Wow, that's so disrespectful." And so I'm guessing that everybody had a different perspective, and they were everything in between. What it comes down to, though, um, is that anything in the Mass that draws our attention away from God would be considered disrespectful. And so, had all the colors been attributed to some feast day, like we celebrated Divine Mercy Sunday, the church I went to was decorated red for Divine Mercy, um, and sometimes it's purple during Lent and Advent and things like that. And so depending on the time of year, church does decorate the church, but it's to draw our attention to God, not away from God, like this soccer thing did. Um, and so it's just important that that's where the church and bishop, I'm sure, stood. Um, what is the most memorable Mass you've ever been to and why? I was kind of curious about your responses. I'm looking forward to reviewing your worksheets. Um, but I've been to Mass in the USA, Canada, China, Africa, Nicaragua, Mexico. Um, and there are no two Masses alike. In China, it was illegal to have Mass, so we did it in a hotel room. It was me, a priest, seminarian, my brother, and this one other guy. Um, who I didn't know who he was because he didn't speak any English. And it was just the five of us had mass in a hotel room. Super weird, but really, really cool. Um, it was in Chinese, so I don't actually know what anything was about. But it was a really cool way to experience mass. Um, in Africa, mass was six hours long every Sunday. Because people would come from miles and miles away. Um... And that was the only time they went to Mass, so it's on Sundays. They didn't go during the week because they couldn't get there because um, they had to walk. And so that was kind of exhausting, but at the same time pretty cool. In Nicaragua, similar structure, um, much more vibrant of a Mass, I guess, than I've been to in the U.S. So all of you guys, I'm sure, have had different experiences with Mass. Um, but it's cool that some people, some cultures have their own way to bring attention and bring light to what Christ has done for us. Um, but at the same time, there's still a universal structure to the Mass. Um, I just want to do one last thing. We're just going to do number seven and then we'll move on. So 
something Marion does to invite students' gifts to be shared with others would be your guys' service requirements. So some, of you, some people do their service, and it's really focused on what they want to do with the rest of their life or a specific gift they have. That would be a way to invite diversity of your gifts to either the school or to community around the school. Um, so this chapter, is, or this section rather, is kind of short, um, so we're going to do it kind of quickly today. Um, but throughout the U.S., parishes and archdioceses are each diverse in their own way. Um, diversity is a great gift to the church, obviously, um, because without it we would all be kind of bored, I'm sure. Um, it is the task of the bishop to draw these diverse groups of beliefs, practices, and people together in communion with one another without depriving his local church of the richness diversity brings. So there's this constant struggle for a healthy balance of uniformity and independence. So like I said, if you go to another country, mass will not look the same. And that's okay, but it is important that we all celebrate with the same universal way God calls us to celebrate the Eucharist. And so bishops and priests and even um people who go to Mass and celebrate church and want to share their faith have a hard time not falling on one extreme or the other. So you know people who are super traditional, super, we should only have the Mass in Latin, and then there are other people that say you should make the Mass more attractive, more fun, more entertaining. So it's important for the bishop to find a healthy balance where he doesn't dismiss what Christ called us to do, but at the same time invites this diverse whatever his diocese is, um, their gifts into the Mass and into the church. Um, so we all share in this <laughs> responsibility to welcome diversity while maintaining tradition. All Catholics have a special obligation to challenge the subtle forms of bigotry, racism, sexism, and any attitude motivated by fear of differences in people or cultures. Um, so even though we don't always do a good job, we do have an obligation as Catholics to challenge these things and to identify the gifts that different groups of people bring and to do so in the light of Christ's love. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I thought I had another slide, but I think that must be for next week. So upcoming assignments. Um, so tomorrow... After your quiz, you guys are going to do a little bit of research on a city or on a different church, and you can do whatever city or diocese you want, and you're going to find all this information out about, um, about that parish. So just today, I want you guys to decide on who's going to do what parish, because you all have to pick your own. There cannot be two of the same. You will each have... Um, if I have two students in the same class who do the same parish, you're both going to get a zero. So today, before class is over, you're still going to do your comprehension questions after this. But before class is over today, somehow figure out a way with your sub that you guys can all sign up for whatever parish you want to do. And tomorrow you'll get your worksheet um, so you can do that. And today, here are your comprehension questions. Answer them as individuals and then go over them as a class. Have a great day, ladies.